Good morning, YouTube. Thanks for joining us here again at 5 Minute Scalpers. Hope everybody is well. Let's start off and get our disclosures out of the way. This stream is for entertainment purposes only. We are not providing neither general or personal advice. That means that we have not taken into account your personal objectives, financial situation or needs, even if they are known. In fact, we are only individuals who like to talk about trading. We do not teach trading nor offer any products or services. Accordingly, this stream may not be appropriate for you. Financial products are complex and entail a risk of loss. OTC derivatives and foreign exchange products are considered speculative because they are highly leveraged to carry a risk of loss beyond your initial investment. Hence, you should only trade with capital you can afford to lose. Please ensure you obtain professional advice to ensure trading or investing in any financial products is suitable for your circumstances and ensure you obtain, read and understand any applicable offer document. Hello everybody. Hope all's well. It's been going on. Everybody been ripping up the pips? Certainly hope so. Okay. What's going on today? Well, I've yet to do any markups. So let's take it from the top, shall we? Okay, so Asia range. A little bit of a breakout there of the Asia range. The last little while. It's a bit interesting. Let's have a look at an even higher timeline. Alrighty. So on the 30, could we be seeking this zone here? Entirely possible. So we'll mark that off. I'm going to put that in a different colour for us all. Lovely. Let's drop down a bit. 15 minutes. Okay. Let's go down for a five minute look-see. Let's just frame it up. Let's get a view of what happened pretty much today in Asia. Might bring it back to that little zone right there. And if we're to go up, we'll probably break this candle and head up to that little high just there. So that's kind of all I'm watching for the moment. I'll go through the news in a second. Let's have a quick look at the euro, see if that's doing anything of interest. Clear all this stuff up. Hey, Najarans, thanks for joining us once again. I hope all is well. Alrighty. On the 30 minute. I'll draw that one in slightly different colour as well. Nothing terribly complex about this one. We're just starting out a little higher and we're just going to tighten it up as we go in. So that's my 30. Anything interesting on the 15? Mm. Well, broke out of that. So we'll have a look there. Let's go back even tighter. Let's drop into the 5. What's going on on the 5 minute? Not much. We can probably just tighten those a little bit. Okay. Trader Tank's on the on the line. How are you, Trader Tank? Good, mate. Thanks. What's been happening? Telling us about. Tell us about your trading journey in the last twenty four hours. How'd you go? Um. Well, in the last twenty four hours, I didn't do much. I didn't do it yesterday. Mm -hmm. But um. Yes, I didn't do it yesterday, but Monday, the time before, I did quite well. My best session yet. Oh, congratulations. Oh, that's right. I forgot you were not on last night. You had uh, football. Uh, yeah. Cool. All righty. So a little bit of a news review. Uh, trade balance just came out in Germany. And that's pretty much it. It's very quiet on the news front. So... Let's go in and see if we can make some money. Hey, Gustav. How's, how's things, my friend? Enjoying life in lovely South Africa? Okay. Let's go back on the pound. Let me zoom in a little bit. Get this a little more precise. One, three, four, nine, nine, seven. That's about right. Lovely to hear. All right. We look like we're forming a little base here. 
that little candle there see that little kink in the candle where you've got a tiny little yellow little pushback followed by a bigger push a push that was bigger than all these previous candles that's always something i pay attention to so keep your eyes on that folks okay so there you go four minutes in and all our markups are done which is good now let's make sure i'm set to roll okay lovely how's risk looking for us risk is bullish today looks a little bit bullish um which isn't too bad us really ripped to some new highs last night so it sort of came off a little bit now just reading here that there is a rate decision on the euro usd but that's not coming up today so nothing critical so it will be an interesting day for us to watch okay so if we come down let me drop that down just a fraction one three eight yep all right we could have a little few pip play just as a little short down here we'll see how we go hey ready thanks for jumping on really appreciate it we might have a little short setting up now we're just gotten into the into the game so be a little bit careful let me just check a couple of other things lovely and how's the US dollar looking today US dollar has been weak the whole session and the pound has been flatlining the whole session so that's why you've seen this sort of gradual burn upwards today it's a good idea to have a quick squiz at the uh, US dollar index give you a flavor of what asset prices are doing big dude may not be with us tonight he's got some stuff that came up last minute he has to attend to uh, but I think uh, scalper king might be joining us at some point That euro does look very extended, doesn't it? Let's have a look at the euro on a daily. Whoa. That's a pretty massive run, isn't it? We're bullish again today. We'll see how that fares. I mean, that is due for a pullback, you'd think, at some point. Two minutes left at this candle. See if it comes down and touches our little zone here. It's looking like there's a few things competing against it at the moment. Hmm. Risk has come off fairly aggressively for this hour. So it started and wicked up a little bit and then came off. <coughs> What's the Euro doing? Euro looks like it's coming back to our line. Let me just double check that I've got that in the right spot. Yeah, yep. Okay. Let's flick back to the pound because people like the pound. Anybody have any strong views on what the market might be doing today 
Anything that we may have missed that we might need to consider? Or is everybody just cruisy and playing and basically waiting to see what happens? It's quite all right if you are. Sometimes we all end up doing that. You can't pick every single session every single time. Fair bit of Euro weakness creeping in. It's kind of halting this market a little bit. So we did get a breach below our zone. Let's see which way she wants to go. So I might have my finger on the short trigger, just in case. Again, I need to see a few things go my way to see what happens. Yeah, fair call, Gustav. I know news days it sometimes gets pretty rough trying to pick direction because the market can just wander around a little aimlessly. Let's see if we get a push down here. Still not seeing everything we'd need to be super confident in this trade. Maybe hesitated just a fraction too long. Sure, some of you would have jumped in. At the moment, things are looking pretty much in your favour. Too late for me to get in. The reason why is because I expected the market to go here. When I go into a stop, I make it the size of the candle. So it was only a few pip trade. And I didn't want to risk too much just to make a few pips. Okay. Probably not a bad idea to start working out where this is going to go if it does break. See this red candle here? That's the push up before the move. That's a point that would I'll be keeping my eyes on. Probably just to be safe, I'll take it down to the bottom of this range at 133745. But what you can see here is you've had quite a lot of order fills in this little range. So you're probably going to see a similar, I mean, you know, not always, but you'll probably see a little bit more difficulty getting through that than, say, cleaning that candle out. But if anybody took that trade, sing out, let us know. Congratulations. Not a bad way to start the day. Remember, if you're only trying to bag 10 pips in a session, you just probably picked up a few. Trader Tank Silence tells me there's a good chance he's in this trade. <laughs> Here we uh, go. No, not actually. Oh, that look. No, I wish I were. Yeah, it was a good setup. Okay. Alrighty. Now, this is where people get frustrated. If it's going to keep ripping past this level, now. Let me just zoom out here. Sadly, there's not a great deal you could do about this. It is what it is. You got that to contend with. That's a little start of the, this move up. So, unfortunately, that's two and a half pips. But if it's there, it's there. I'd love to say it's a 12 pip range, but uh, it's not. It's two and a half. What might be what might be fun is if we break through here, we'll come down and test this range here. GBP USD is playing that level. It is. Okay. So, it is a fairly key level for the session in Asia. You're right, Gustav. Anybody looking at any other markets today other than the pound US dollar? It's always good to have a look and see what else is on offer in the market. Hey Miss Hella, how are you? Thanks for coming on board. Hope all's well. Have you been busting out some pips?
Hmm. Let me just check. When is this ACB rate decision? Tomorrow. Hmm. Probably not a great chance they're going to do anything. But this euro has been moving fairly freakishly. And what goes up generally comes down at some point. I'm fine. GU is starting its business. It is. Same old, same old. Let's just have a look. Where are we in relation to our old mate, the daily open line? Daily open line. Oh, it's had a pretty decent push. How far is the pound off from the daily open? Oh, that's a big push too. So every day we've sort of seen a re-hit or a retest of those daily open lines. Will it happen today? Who knows? But we'll keep an eye out for it because there's a fair bit of fair bit of movement there. Or a fair bit to run if it does tank. Okay, so this is the new 15 minute candle. We'll see if this thing's either going to base and kick back up. But I wouldn't be too interested in shorts until we clear out this area here. Hmm. Looks like at this point, and it's way too early to say, but if we're going to have a, well, actually, no, don't make a trade based on this, but looks like there's a reasonable possibility that it might base out here and kick up just from everything else that I'm seeing. Not enough, inf not enough to infer a trade by any means, but it seems like it is going to have some issues in this range. Hmm. We are seeing a little base off the euro. Hasn't closed yet, of course. So where would we go if we were to base on this next candle? And what I mean base, I'd, I'd like to see a body close above that body close. A little pullback. And look, still only three and a half pips. But again, as long as you're not greedy... You take your pips and you enjoy the rest of your life. It's pretty reasonable to achieve. So we'll have a look how that one closes. And now, if I was looking at the pound US dollar, I'd want to see a base on the next candle because it's too early to be taking it into this range here. I concur between 702 and 642. We have a lot of strong resistance. Call it a restricted and protected zone. 100% Najarens. Good analysis as per usual.
And once they're in those zones, you're kind of just guessing. So knowing when to just sit back is very important. Um, as you look at the markets in their totality, you tend to see it more and more. It becomes second nature to you. Uh, and look, sometimes you have to wait an awful long time, but it's not generally too bad if you're trading the five minute. If you use a four hour trader, you get stuck in a range. Well, that can take you out for a week or two. So just back to the euro, you see what I mean? It's tried to base out, uh, but couldn't do it. That's why it's important to wait for the close of a candle. So it came back down into the body of this candle. So it's gone back into no man's land. Oh, it's the high today. One three three nine six nine. So I tried to hit that one three four level, and uh, sort of just didn't come back, or didn't didn't come through with it. I oh, look, I find the euro US dollar pretty tough to trade too, Nazarins. It's just interesting as a reference point. The real reason I look at the euro US dollar um, is not because I trade it very often, but I do look at it because the euro US dollar is the most heavily traded pair in the world, hands down. I can't remember the exact number, but I think it makes up around 60 something percent uh, of the US dollar index. Now, if you knew where the US dollar was going to be this time next year, with certainty, you could pretty much predict the price of bonds, you could predict the price of equities, you could predict the price of copper, you could predict the price of gold, because the US dollar is the linchpin to everything. Um, and a lot of famous economists have said, hey, if I knew the US dollar, I could predict every asset in the world. Um, but when I'm looking at the euro, the reason I have a look at it is purely to sit there and go, eh, How's the euro comparing to the US dollar at the moment? Okay. If the euro is really strong against the euro, uh, the US dollar, means the US dollar is falling. It's pretty much a risk on environment normally. If it's weak, you don't do it. So it's just a ready reckoner to say, hmm, what's going on with the dollar? How's its biggest component or its biggest constituent working with it? Um, and that's not because of anything other than, well, I mean, it is to do with the size but uh, of the euro, but there's a thing called the euro dollar, which isn't the US dollar that we're talking about. It's about US dollars that are held overseas. So if you have a US dollar and you're doing it, if you're doing a US dollar transaction in France, you're doing something known as the euro dollar. It's very confusing, I know. It was around before the euro was implemented but that is where most US dollars lie outside America so that's a little bit of a boring topic a little bit more complex but for those interested in why markets do what they do you probably might want to have a look at or Google euro dollar overseas currencies all right here we go we've now had the break One three three six four seven. Darn it. Anyone jump in that one? No, I didn't get in that one. I was, uh, was going to jump back quickly. Yeah. Well, came right off our zone. All right. So, 
every time you hit a zone or preferably before you sit there and you ask yourself well if it does break this zone where's it going to go to all right and all you're really looking at is the last swing point so guess what if it really does break this zone we're going to go back and test what our old mate the daily open line so I'm not going to draw a line in there because that's automatically going to plot for me but for those of you who don't have this chart put a zone or put a line on 13351 and we'll see if we get there and generally when it hits it it'll break it by a pip or two but it's an area that it tries to seek out like a bit of a magnet price in the zone sure is and I, I mean I mean essentially when we're drawing these up you know for those of you who've been with us for a while you can start to see that every single day price is just running from one zone to the other to the other to the other to the other and I run out of things to talk about <laughs> so um, yeah Light bulb moment, the 6.47 should hold. Um, should hold for this candle, um, I would hope. Although the US dollar is pretty strong today. Hey, big dude. Yeah, mate, I'll let everybody know that... Um, that you had something on. We got Trader Tank on, so that's all good. Big dude has some kid responsibilities, which always come first over trading. <laughs> Everybody misses you, big dude. Will it hold? I think it's going to break. Okay, so I want to see a close below this zone. If we see a few things all rocking and rolling, we'll short it. I hope your I hope your son's okay, big dude. X-rays and doctors are never a fun thing when you got kids. What do you think in Trader Tank? What do you think is going to happen on this next candle? Um, I'm actually on a short right now. Awesome. So right now I'm down a pip. Okay, so you didn't wait for the candle to close. Uh, no, I've been in here for a while when it just breached at about two minutes with can open and it just hit my open. Yeah, yeah. lost that one. Okay. Don't take this the wrong way if anybody thinks I'm being a bit of a dick. I'm just talking to uh, Trader Tank because he's pretty new to trading. That was a good setup, but you didn't wait for the break of that candle. Uh, sorry, you didn't wait for the close of that candle. Closes are important because, as you can see, it came down for a pip, but it sort of pushed back up. If you had a close below this zone, it's got a much higher propensity if you see everything else setting up to, to fall down. Well, did you say you made money on that trader tank? 
no, 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 lost. Okay, yeah. So it's tempting to jump into a candle as it's sort of mid-move, but closes are very important. Yeah. And look, to be fair, you'll probably get 60 70% of them right. Um, but losses aren't good for the psyche. Yeah. And if it makes you feel better, I probably did it 1,000 times before I stopped doing it. Okay, what's going to happen now? Nazarin's was correct, it did hold. At least for the time being. New 30 minute candle. So just to clarify, we're either going to base here and push up. If we close below this one, really strong chance we'll head down. But we've got to form that base first. For the base to form, you need those little swings that we talked about last night and today. And a base requires a body break. I know that sounds probably like gibberish to a lot of people, but uh, stick around. And you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Because it doesn't look like it's going to base right now. What's the direction, big dude? Well, we've been up. So we had a push up in the morning and we're just sort of, there's a bit of risk off coming into the market. So we've come off the highs still positive for the day in terms of its daily open line but we're just kind of doing our thing pre-London working out where it's going to go This Euro move has been really quite phenomenal. I can't, it's got to come back at some point. Oh, I'm on the 15. Sorry, guys. Okay, so what do I mean by a body break? I want to push up. body of this has to break the body of that. And I, ideally, I want to close of this body above the close of this body. From there, we wait for a small pull down. And if everything confirms, push straight back up there. Yeah, identical to our last trade yesterday. Ever since looking at the levels you draw and drawing it in myself, there's been a major improvement in the way I trade. Great news. Happy to hear it. Nazarins. It was, um, most people that go through it and do, do, like once they can see, like I say, Nazarins, you can probably see them now and you can't stop seeing them. Um, but no matter what style you do, no matter what trading you do, you'd always use the lines. So it can only help improve virtually every strategy. Because once you've got that bit mastered, your entries become such, like most people spend 99% of their time working on their entry strategy and forget about everything else. But once you kind of got this bit nailed, you know, you could probably trade moving average crossovers if you had the ability to draw those lines on and uh, make money out of it.
Looks like big dude. Looks like a zone forming on my app. Hard to judge from an app in a hospital. <laughs> Could form a range. Looks like it's trending around those zones for a week ago. Before the Brexit drop in a roundabout way. Yeah. All right. So we kind of had our little break here. It's not a clean break. You know, we're not going to be too crazy. So I'm going to have my finger on the buy trigger just in case we get a push. Now, if this candle was to reverse on itself and I was in the trade, I'd be out. So you're talking a very tight stop. Yeah, I'm going to take it. We'll see how we go. Round number at 700. Don't like those big round numbers. All right, if this doesn't start pushing soon, I'm going to kill it. It's just looking like it's running out of wheat bix. Three minute marks, what we keep our eyes on, remember, folks. Yeah, look, I'm going to kill it. Why do I kill it? <coughs> because everything else that I look at just says that this is running out of puff a little bit. Will it probably go up to that zone? Yep. Do I really want to risk it? No. Are my spreads really cheap? Yep. Did I make a profit? Yep, I'll be a tiny one. Just trade a tank or anybody in that trade. Reversal candle. Yep, correct. One pip away from our line. I'm assuming Trader Tank is in it because we're not hearing from him, which is good. Scalper King's running a tiny bit late. And I'm going to let you guys all go if you are in this trade right now. Well, if you measure that line to your spread, it's probably about the same. You could take it now and just have picked up a couple of pips, but I'll leave everybody make up their own minds.
Super Trade. Learned something new. Great to hear. Ready. I'm excited. Good work. Trader Tank, how'd you go? I uh, didn't get on that one. Oh, fair enough. People often ask why I get up and leave the screen after I've made a trade. It's a psychological thing. If I don't leave the screen, I have a tendency to click the button a few times. So it mentally resets me. So we've all got our own crazy idiosyncrasies when it comes to trading, and that's just one of mine, guys. hope it makes sense. Because I did find myself back in the early days forming a habit, which everybody has done, which is reverse trading. So you take a loss, you go, oh, damn it, I'll take another one. Oh, damn it, I'll take another one. Before you know it, you've blown your session. After a trade... I walk away from the screens for a couple of minutes and it just resets me. But I'll never generally ever go into a trade. Actually, that turned out to be a pretty decent move. I think what's annoying me, I'm, I'm putting too much emphasis on psychological numbers and I never used to. So I don't know why I'm starting to think about that. Maybe it's trading on the stream. So if anybody hears me banging on about psychological numbers, feel free to tell me I am being a goose. That goes for anybody on the chat. You all see me trade long enough now, and I'm pretty open about when, I, um, when I'm doing something. I can pick it up pretty quick when I'm changing something ever so slightly. And I never used to... I never used to talk about psychological numbers and now I find myself chatting about them all the time. It does work, ready? It does, because look, everybody's got the same traits as they're going through their trading journey. Number one, they over-risk. All right, so how do you overcome over-risking? You develop a strategy that you can keep your, tight, your stops very, very, very tight like we do. Um, second thing if you find that you're really over-risking and you're finding it difficult to overcome that, is don't be greedy. Set yourself a goal, a goal for the day. And when you take it, shut down. Um, revenge trading. Way I overcame revenge trading, walk away from the office or from the terminal. You don't have to do it for long. It's just something that clicks in your head. What are some other ones? Spending too much time concerned with entry setups and less on managing your trades. Um, how do we do that? Again, had to work on a strategy that, that suited everybody. Big Dude, for example, doesn't mind it. He's, he, he's, often, he's a better swing trader than I am, that's for sure. Scalper King's got a different risk profile mentally. And that's why um, he gets more fluctuation in his account. So those are the things you just got to ask yourself over time. Because for every issue, there's always a solution. It's, and it's normally not as big as people think. Okay. So let's just scroll out. What happened here? We went up, we clicked up, hit the top of our zone we didn't hit it bang on i hear you say well the difference on that is about 0.4 my spread is 0.7 so sometimes you got to factor in the spread because i reckon i could have bought a house in new york city with the money of lost trying to chase that last pip to get right to the line Okay, what are we seeing now? Fifteen minutes till London Open. So we might start to see some action happening. Just for anybody, this wasn't perfect in the sense that I do prefer that body to close above that body ever so slightly, but it was good enough to say, well, we need to we need to really sometimes make an educated call. If 
you saying things happen? Could be looking at a wick fill here. Uh, big dude, it's hard to hard to call the shots from a iPhone in a hospital waiting room, mate. I think we'll forgive you on that one. And that's the wick fill. Finger on the buy trigger. You're not trading from the hospital, I hope big dude come on man you made like I can't remember you're up about 15 grand in the last week I think you should chill no you're not up 15 or yes you are up 15 oh just comments yeah good Okay, where are we going now? I'll put it out to the... If we closed above here, we saw a few things. Where would we go? Where would we have an issue? Just there, small zone. We might burst through it and hit now. That was a pretty good move, actually. It's a 17 pipper. Oh, okay. It was my finger on the buy trigger for me. No, mate. Sorry, it wasn't. Um, probably could have been. Looks like it's going to rip now. Nice. Trade it there. Trade a tank. All right. So here we're off this line, broken straight through that. So where's it going to go now? Up to the next zone. And just so we scroll back, where are we going to go if we break that? Well, we'll just mark up the top of that body. Now remember, you should wait for the end of candles. Excellent, Marcella. You don't, um, if you don't see what you like, don't trade it. It's, um, it's a way to lose money. Trading is pretty bloody hard and it's so easy to lose money in it. It's the maintenance of discipline over a lot. Everybody can be disciplined for an hour and a half and they can probably do it for 15 days straight. It's the 16th day that gets people. So how do you avoid that? Try and keep your tradings limited um, in terms of the time you're spending in front of the screen. I know when people are learning and digesting new stuff, they have a tendency to stare at screens for hours and hours and hours. And nothing I say is going to change that. So the only thing I would say is if you are going to get into that space, because we all did it. Big Dude did it. Scalper King did it. Trader Tank's probably currently doing it. I did it. If you want to save yourself losing money from staring at screens for like, you know, 12, 13, 14 hours a day, try and limit it to the weekend. Go on to a back tester because then you can't hurt yourself. Otherwise, you blow your account. I've done some stupid things, and we have all done them. And I think that's one thing everybody should own up to it and say, yeah, I've done some really stupid things. 
Really stupid things. All right. I bet you everybody's done this. You've had a good week. Friday rolls round. And maybe, I don't know, maybe you're up 12% for the week. And you go, 12%, man, I'm on fire. But you know what? I'm going to bag out 15% and have a great weekend. And what happens chasing that last 3%? You give up all of the 12, and even then some. That's one thing that I've done back in the day. I'm sure a few of you have done it too. And why do I suck on Fridays? Because I get tired. <laughs> in there, done that. Yep. Trade a tank, don't do that. So what was that? Don't do what? <laughs> Don't do all of the dumb things that we've all done. We were having a laugh when you sit there and you're up 12% for a week on a Friday and you want to get to 15 and chasing that 3%, you end up giving up all your profits and then some. Yeah, I did that a bit last week. <laughs> oh, there you go. You got you got your cab off the rank. Yeah. But it's... People, trading's a lonely game and people think that it's just them that are having these issues or have had these experiences. I don't care who you are. I reckon Warren Buffett's probably done some stupid stuff too. Just going to fill up my water bottle. I'll be back in two seconds. All right. Now it's just a good time to check whether we still need all of these lines here. <laughs> Simon Van Seedy. I make my money at London Open and lose it midday. <coughs> but it's just hard to walk away. Yep. We've all done that too. And do you know why you do that, Simon? Or why... I, well, I shouldn't say that. It sounds, makes me sound like a know-it-all. Do you know why I used to do that? <coughs> because at midday, volatility comes out of the market. If you don't have enough volatility in the market, you get chopped up. And when we first started out, we were all trading just the Asian session. And if you're not aware of when the market's going to die in Asia, man, it's brutal. It's generally only about three or four 15-minute candles that'll move in Asia. So it's probably not anything you're doing wrong. It's just uh, markets get a bit slow. And it's hard when you're testing to really pinpoint that that's what's happening. Yeah, for sure. And also, to ask yourself why you got into trading. The reason, this is the funny thing. We all do it. Everybody gets into trading because they're sitting there at their 9 to 5 and go, man, this sucks. You know what I'd like? I'd like to be able to sit there and read the markets, sit down for a couple of hours, make some money, and enjoy my life, have the freedom. But as people go on the journey of learning how to trade, they forget that that's their initial goal. That's true. Find another interest. All right, we're coming up to London. Having a quick look through these lines, look, they pretty much all stack up. The only one thing, I look, I'm always wary of those ones, but the range seems to kind of be forming around here. So... We'll leave that there, but anybody eyeballing it, just keep an eye on that little candle there. If 
five minutes. Another good habit to get into because we don't all have perfect memories is five minutes before the hour. Just do a quick check to make sure you haven't forgotten any news coming out. Of which we have none. Very mixed market right now. There's clear, absolutely no setups for this current candle. So don't do anything. If anything, yeah, we might get a bit of a push down, but. There's nothing concrete. How long do you think you're going to be stuck at the hospital, big dude? Is the waiting room looking horrendous? Okay, now, because this is about to go into London Open, I wouldn't see it. But as you can see, you had this little swing here. You've now formed another little swing here. Depending on where this closes, if the body of this closes below that, on that sort of swing structure, you got if things set up, you've got a probability of coming back down. Now, the only issue that we have... Let me just check something. No, they're kind of all still valid. The only issue that you've got is you've got zone here or resistance here, resistance here. So there's not much meat on the bone, but I'm only mentioning it to highlight what I'm talking about with those little three bar swings. And realistically, that's kind of 90% of market structure for people. People tend to make make it a little more complicated than it really has to be. What's our friend the Euro doing? Euro's coming off. See our little reaction on that last line? Well, we'll probably draw one in around here too. Although we don't generally trade it. EU drop. Yeah, well, I was talking about the EU today. So if, it's been a it's been a super big run. So if the euro drops, if the euro drops hard, it's going to really put pressure on the US dollar as well. So that's why you hear things going moving in sympathy with one another. It really, all comes down to US dollar movements, unless it's a cross bear. That's a whole lesson for another day. All right, 10 seconds still open. Let's go, let's make some money. Oh, see, push back. Didn't look, we can close, so that swing's now invalid. And that again, I can't stress it enough, it's important to wait for the close.
Looks like it might push here. And if we fit now, here's what you look at next. Bring your eyes straight to this. So that one invalidated itself. Now you've got this push. So a body close above the body of this close. All right. Higher chance that it's going to go up. Now I'm not saying just wait for that and trade off that. But if it's got a higher chance of going up, if you see those little structures and you've got your zones drawn in appropriately, well then realistically it doesn't matter what system you're using, all you've got to wait for is a setup. But if you want confirmation, wait for those structure breaks, draw those lines in, ask yourself, where's this price going to go to? Again, have to wait for the market, uh, for the candle to close. But if you go back test your charts, you can see that every move starts from something that looks exactly like that, or exactly like that, or exactly like that. So it sounds sounds easy, sounds silly, but gaining an edge in the market, there's not one thing that's going to give you a 20 or 30% edge, it's little incremental things that you string together. Okay, so so we drew that little zone in when we saw it before. Where did it react off? Straight off that. It's all the market's going to do all day. Remember, folks, I've got that little yellow candle there for anybody that's looking at a long. Got to keep just a bit of an eye out for it. But we can't have 7 million lines on the chart. So, again, the importance of waiting for candle closes. <coughs> Although if this finishes right here, we technically still have one. We could go up for a, what's commonly known as a wick fill. Will be the third test, but so that's not great. Okay, that's the first five minutes of London out of the way. Let's see what's going to happen now. Oh. This is a push. Watch out for that little yellow candle. Let's see where she's going to go. I'm going to adjust this back two pips. Very simple reason for that is that that is yesterday's daily high. OK, 
keep my finger on the buy. Oh. Yeah, I keep my finger on the buy trigger. Not seeing perfection yet. This would be a risky move. Risk is coming off pretty aggressively here. Let me just have a deeper look at that. Oh, it's still positive for the day. Looks dramatic on the chart, but it's only really a smallish move. But if it continues to, to weaken, essentially what that generally does is it'll strengthen the US dollar. But it's not a big enough move to warrant that. Stuck on our line here. Not much doing here guys, you see we're on that line there, that is, whenever you're on a line it's 50-50, and unless you've got really good risk management or risk reward in your trades, don't trade 50-50s. Trader Tank, you still on? Yeah, I'm still on. I'm just watching. Have I missed anything? Any trades no, you've jumped no, in? I've, no, I've not made any trades. Okay. I don't even have a view on where the next candle is going at this point. Euro has gone back into its range.
possible short. Put my finger on the sell trigger just in case, but it's not an advisable thing to do at this point. What do the higher time frames look like? Hey Dad, how are you mate? Didn't know you were on. Dad, you've been trading mate? How's it been going? Grabbed a few points on the big yellow. Nice one. Yeah, it was a good setup. Got any ideas on where it's going next, as? This moves a little strange, this yellow candle right here. I don't think this yellow is going to hold. Probably rip up now. <laughs> yeah, I've just got the daily high marked in. That's kind of what I'm waiting for too, Daz. I'm just telling everybody just be careful of that little candle there. got the pound and the euro moving in unison now that's why everything's a bit contained kw how are you brother kw is the analysis master what do you got for us today champ anything that's catching your eye Here's that yellow line we were talking about, lovely, broken. Here's the line from earlier in the session. Oh my God, I can't believe I just missed that. <laughs> Happens, mate. Well, what happened? Were you waiting for it? Um. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was away, just doing something. Okay, why is this line drawn in here, folks, for those that have just jumped on? Just scroll back a bit. Just the top of that line there. NJ and me, UK on. Huh? Took three pips in the waiting room. Excellent work. Let's see. Just got home from work, keeping an eye on flows. 
Uh, coal. Man, this is going to keep pushing. Where's it going to next? One, three, four. One nine one. One nine two, that'll do. Jeez, the lines are breaking quicker than I can draw them in. That one was a bit of a lemon. Didn't do anything. Yeah, good, mate. Not too bad at all. Been knocking out, knocking out some profits. I've been missing a couple of trades because I've been chatting too much on the stream, but we've still been up pretty much every day. Or well, yeah, pretty much every day. I think we've had, I think our worst session we've been down 2.8 pips. Other than that, we've always been cranking it out. What about you, mate? You've been trading at all? I know you've been working and stuff. <laughs> I think you're right, Simon. Just to give people context, the big dude's sitting in the hospital waiting room with his son who's broken his finger. And uh, while everybody else is watching the prices right or something, big dude's busted out the pips. <laughs> Done for the day. Two trades, 17 pips. Just look at that last candle. Excellent work, Daz. You're on fire. <laughs> okay. Where is she going to? Possibly another 15 pips in this move. If you have a good setup. One thing I've just marked up here, I'll bring to everybody's attention. Look at that four hour. We'll draw this in a new color. Little swing high right there. So, i draw the top of that in. So here's our options. You can see there that we drew that line and we drew that line in off, I think, a shorter time frame. And that's the kind of range of the candle. So that looks pretty small, but look, from a five minute perspective, there's a fair bit of, um, fair bit of movement in it. So we'll just give it a bit and see where it's gonna go to.
Hmm. A bit of resistance around these levels, yeah, a little bit. It was a big move. I'm trying to work out whether it was off the back of. Oh, well. Five PM break to the downside. Seventh. Fair enough. Gonna eye off a pullback possibly on the next candle. Hey, Sushi, haven't seen you for ages. Good to hear, Sush. I'm going to be eyeing a possible short. It's going to be a risky one, guys. Uh, if it doesn't pan out, I'm going to call it a night for the stream. I think everybody who follows us has had a pretty good session. Our analysis was pretty pretty good. Didn't call any bad trades. I think the ones we did call were all good. But we'll see. Just got a feeling that this move is a bit exaggerated. But I could be wrong. We'll have to see where this closes. Okay, 45 seconds to go. If we're going to do this, it's going to be a pretty risky trade, guys. Just giving everybody a heads up. Fingers on the short trigger. Yeah, I got that one here at the top, Sush. So I've got that marked in. I'm not sure whether it's going to get there, but... It's been brought to my attention that Australians have a really bad habit of ending questions with the word but. It makes us sound like morons, but we all do it. <laughs> but. Okay, finger is on, I'm not really seeing what I want, it's on the sell trigger, just in case, if I'm right we might get a push here, yep, I'm going to short it, again, very risky trade guys. If this goes on itself, I'll give it one more pip maybe.
and we'll kill that one. That was a pretty bad trade and probably shouldn't have taken it. Um, down about two pips. Cool trade of tank. Uh, yeah, probably push that one a little too hard. But I think most people have had a pretty good session. I think maybe sushi might be right. We might have a rip straight up here. I'll give it another few minutes. Because that one failed. What if it failed? We might be doing that 15 pip run. Sushi's in a buy. Let's see if we will get this push. Thirteen seconds to go, new half hour candle. Yeah, still got a vent that it's coming down. So, what am I going to do here? Don't want to get caught out necessarily. Okay, my finger's on the sell trigger. In fact, I'm going to sell it. So that we get a pretty decent push would be nice. Back to our line. Starting to run out of steam a little bit. I've got to break through the 1341.
I'm just eyeing off that one through four one hundred. I don't want to push too far back into that. Come on, give us a big surge. Anybody in, you can probably take profits now. See what the next 60 seconds does. Mm -mm. Running out of steam. It's a possible turning point here. All right, we'll kill that one. Why are we stuck here? Let me have a quick look. Hmm. No real reason that I can see. 